Hey nerds of YouTube, it's Bash Bunny. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about my best study tips to learn smarter, not harder. Yeah, been thinking I might need to. Get All right, so first of all, I actually found this life hack when I was in grade 11. I hadn't studied for my biology test the next day. I had to cram overnight. Like, I'm not kidding. I got the night before the exam, the morning of the exam. That was my study time for this test. Would have been helpful to have more study time, but I actually ended up performing quite well on this exam, and I want to give pretty much full credit to this first tip and that was movement for recall. So I was doing recall based studying for this class in particular because we got a lot of definitions and make sure we, that we were using the right terminology in when we were answering any questions and things like that. So while I had a good understanding of some of the concepts, memorizing those definitions was really hard. And one thing that I found that helped me immensely was the night before I went to the gym and I brought my cue cards with me. So I brought like, I was doing like Quizlet cue cards. And I went to, I went on the treadmill and I went on the stationary bike. And I think I might've been there for one to two hours, basically just doing a very slow pace. So I was just walking or just doing like a nice rhythmic pace on the bike. And while I was doing that, I was actually revising my cue cards. And I found that I retained probably about 90% of what I'd studied by the end of the two hours, I was able to answer all of the questions effectively. Like every single one I was able to get. And I, I think a huge part of that was the movement. So getting that blood flow going, my brain just felt like it was, it was move, moving more smoothly. So where something that, where a term that I was struggling with would have taken me maybe four tries or five tries if I had been sedentary. While I was moving, it took me maybe like twice two or three tries depending and so that was like a pretty substantial decrease in attempts before I was able to recall the correct value. So that was really really interesting. I also have links in the description with academic journals that I found online through my favorite site Science Daily which basically provides you with up-to-date academic research for free. So I really really like the site. They basically provide a overview of what the study has validated, what, what went on in the study, and then they provide the journal reference and of course which university conducted it and it is minimally edited, a little context of what Science Daily is and all that is linked in the description. For this case there is one called Physical Activity in Lessons Improves Students Attainment that talks about students who partake in physical exercises like star jumps, running on the spot, during school lessons actually end up doing better in tests than their peers who stick to sedentary learning. So if you are still learning from home this might be a fun way that you can learn more with your lectures or if you're self-teaching and you're watching a lot of videos, you can start maybe trying to exercise while you are listening to them and it might help jog your memory. Number two is recall-based studying. So as I mentioned, I did this a lot when I was both in high school and university. Recall-based studying is the best way, hands down, to learn. If you are having to apply what you're learning and try and remember specifics about how to do it, it's going to be more of a challenge for you and it is going to help you solidify that in your noggin. All right. Learning gains. Five head learning gains. Okay. So for this one, I do also have a peer reviewed article that with the title Learning Science, Actively Recalling Information from Memory Beats Elaborate Study Methods. I encourage you to look at that article if you're interested in learning more about that. And then number three, which helped me immensely, this is one I learned in university because your girl, your girl was so busy. I was so busy in university. I was working while in university and I pretty much had days where it was 6 a.m. 6 a.m. is when I would be at school. So 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. ish. And the whole day I was either studying, doing homework, in lecture, or working. So I had a very, very full plate. And this is where I learned about power naps. So I basically would take a power nap every day around 20 to 30 minutes, I think, if I recall correctly, um, after my afternoon lectures. And this made all the difference in the world. It almost felt like a reset button 
during the day. So not only did it reset my energy levels, but it also helped solidify any of the concepts that I had just learned in lecture and actually helped me with recall, helped me with stress as well. So like the stress up until that point in the day kind of got nullified by the nap, which was nice. So I highly recommend power naps. If you're somebody who is able to nap during the day without having it affect your sleep cycle, this helped me a lot and ended up being the only way that I was able to sustain such a crazy schedule and so many things on my plate without absolutely just imploding. For our naps, we've actually got two articles. One of them is talking about how daytime naps help us acquire information not consciously perceived and how basically the study is suggesting that information acquired during wakefulness may potentially be processed in some deeper qualitative way during sleep. So it can actually help you process that information and potentially create new understandings while you're sleeping of the information that you've just heard during wakefulness and then the next one is actually called naps help your memory so a group that slept in the afternoon showed a distinct improvement in their task performance by that evening as opposed to the group that stayed awake during the entire day which did not exhibit any improvement following an entire night's sleep both groups exhibited the same skill level and this part of the research showed that the daytime nap speeds up performance improvement in the brain and after a night's sleep the two groups were at the same level but the group that slept in the afternoon improved much faster than the group that stayed awake so that is another interesting consideration in terms of napping during the day and let's talk about number four drawing concepts this actually revolutionized math for me i had never thought to draw out a math problem in my life until i was in university and one of my professors actually was talking about math and how he loves math and he came to love math when he started drawing out the problems and i was like hello what do you mean this is like <laughs> this is differential calculus like what do you mean <laughs> what do you mean and he actually showed us how basically you can start drawing out different mathematical problems and it will help you understand the solution better and especially so like not only during class when you're being provided with a solution but also you know in exams or something like that if you have a scrap paper sometimes it can be helpful to draw out the problem and it'll actually help you figure it out because I think it's really easy to overcomplicate those problems in your head but I find personally that I've actually applied this to across the board to all my classes so Often my notes end up looking like a mind map and I do pen and paper notes and it basically ends up being a bunch of keywords with little points to other keywords and that's pretty much how, how I would take notes during lecture because I found it way more effective at not only during lecture understanding how things would relate and coming up with good questions to ask the teacher after lecture but it also helped me when I was reviewing because I already had access to the slides or the content that was discussed during lecture the expectations for that week of what we should be learning either in the form of slides or textbook or whatever but I did find that when I would look back on the drawings versus looking back on just notes copied from the whiteboard or whatever I would be able to recall more accurately what was being discussed in the lecture at the time and remember the concepts that the teacher was explaining. So it really, really helped me solidify my understanding of like how things were actually working versus just like regurgitating information. So drawing was really helpful. I've got a article as well called Drawing is Better Than Writing for Memory Retention, which talks about how researchers compared different types of memory techniques in aiding retention of a set of words in a group of undergraduate students and a group of senior citizens. Participants would either encode each word by writing it out, by drawing it out, or by listing physical attributes related to each item. Later on, after performing each task, memory was assessed, and both groups showed better retention when they used drawing rather than writing to encode the new information, and this effect was especially large in older adults. So that one's a little bit, that one's pretty interesting, and very cool, very cool. You don't have to be good at drawing, okay? Just for the record, I'm not very good at drawing. Five? I don't know if I can count, but rephrasing in your own words I feel like this is something that you get pushed to do in elementary school like this is something that your teachers are forever making you do either in worksheets or exams or exercises but it works okay if you're learning from a book you should be summarizing at least at the end of every chapter maybe on the page itself what is the information that you're learning in this section 
just something in your own words, explain it as if you're going to teach somebody else. And this will help you find the gaps in your knowledge and make sure that you're actually retaining and understanding the information that you're reading instead of just passively reading and you may or may not fully be understanding what is being said. So highly, highly recommend that. I have a an article that talks about how active learning is more effective than not. So also linked in the description. And then finally, my favorite, apply and fail and then ask questions. So try your best with what you can remember to solve a problem or to answer a question and then find the gaps. Okay, what did you mess up on? Sometimes you can do that yourself. Sometimes you get stuck and you need to ask somebody else. And this has to be my favorite and best strategy for learning is basically fail a lot, fail fast, ask questions, iterate. And this helps. I think this ties in as well with like the recall based learning. But this to me is the most effective way to learn. According to science, learning is optimized when we fail 15% of the time. So if you're in a class and you're getting 85%, congrats, you are exactly learning optimally. <laughs> that is also going to be linked in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your best study tips to learn smarter, not harder. These are just what I picked up over the years in university, in high school, whatever. There is definitely not a proportionate effort to success ratio and I learned that the hard way <laughs> I used to just, I used to put so much work into studying and then I would never I would get like a C and I was like okay I don't I don't understand how this works and then it was only when I started focusing on basically work smarter not harder then I started to find better strategies I was basically researching how people study effectively, how you learn effectively. And once I started learning that stuff, I kind of became unstoppable. But for real, I changed from basically like a B average student to an A average student. So that was like pretty, pretty good. I'm a lifelong learner who will continue to humble myself with things I do not know. So any and all study tips are appreciated. And let me know in the comments if you try any of these and they help or don't help. You can also let me know in the Discord. I will link to the Discord group below. We have a pretty awesome substantial community from both the Twitch streams, YouTube, and Twitter. So yeah. That'll be fun. Let me know in the Discord. Let me know on in the comments, wherever you want. Or just don't let me know at all and I'll just cry myself to sleep. It's fine. Okay, bye. I'll see you guys Ain't in the next one. For real though. Party. Bye. <laughs> I don't dress like I arrived tardy. Even if I arrived tardy. I'm riding wolves with Princess Minnokia. Yeah. Lost in Japan. You don't know where I am. I'm lost in Japan. Forgot about the plan. Yeah. Feeling that.